Sally, welcome back. Thank you for having me back. And in the studio. I know, I feel so special in here I now. Do. It's very professional. We're well, settled with the cameras. Last time you were in Queensland, but now you've moved back to Sydney. I was that, in Queensland. I know that was a long time ago. It was brief stint. It lasted seven months. Wow. And I decided that was that, short and sweet. Yeah, the brown snake wasn't for me, the river. Mm-hmm. Um, and came to live back by the ocean at Bondi. Soccer. Yeah. Typical Brit, you know? Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> with all the rest Couldn't of them down Couldn't be more British, yeah. <laughs> Now, one thing I want to ask you about today is you did a post. This is actually off the back of a post that you did, which I which caught my attention. A nutritionist on foods she'd never eat. Ba, ba, ba. I know. Um, what are they? What foods would I never eat? Yes. Okay. I mean, there's probably a decent list just because I really like to keep things pretty nutritious. But I'm also a big believer in being able to enjoy a little bit of everything should you choose to. My choices would be of the hit list would be not the Impossible Burger, just because of the vast amount of random ingredients that I don't recognize. Literally couldn't name half of them if I tried. So that's always one off the list for me. Can we just talk about that for a minute? Please, yeah. It seems like the word impossible is being added (laughs) into a lot of foods. When I was in the US over Christmas, there was the Impossible Bagel. The Impossible Muffin. Oh, that's interesting. Is it like clickbait for food? I don't know. <laughs> You're just like, sure, I'll have or that. Or is it just, you can actually, it, it, it's trying to pass itself off as healthy. Mm. But is it really? Probably just marketing spiel, I would say. I always go back to if, and this is so cliche, but if it's not from the ground or if it looks really basic and it's like one or two ingredients, the chances are you could probably pick a healthier option. So like if you think fruits, vegetables, lean meat, stuff from the earth, stuff from the sky, you're probably always going to be pretty good on the nutrition front. Anything beyond that has been processed probably to a decent degree if it's called the impossible something. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, and generally speaking, processing removes fiber and protein a lot of the time and nutrients and things like that. So you just want to be a little bit careful on that front. I always say 80% whole foods, the one ingredient stuff, and then 20% treat. So enjoy, you know, a little bit of impossible burger. <laughs> you do get lulled into, well, particularly the section in the supermarket where you think, okay, I want to cut down on my meat or if you're going vegetarian or whatever it may be, plant-based diet. Mm. And you're drawn to, you know, the veggie patties and and the things like that. Absolutely. Do you eat those? Um, On occasion, absolutely. And it's because it looks yummy and I don't try, I'm sorry, I should say, I try really hard to stay away from the marketing claims because I know a lot of them are BS. So I will always flip over and read the nutrition panel so I know really what I'm getting because often it'll be, you know, like it'll have photos of trees and plants and stuff and you're like, oh, this looks healthy. But anything, any food that's got a photo on the front of it probably is, or like a picture or an animation is probably not actually just a natural food. So don't be fooled. Always read the nutrition label like get used to flipping foods over but again 20 percent balance you know like it's not realistic to say to someone only eat fruits vegetables and lean meats because of course you would feel optimized in your health and you'd have all the vitamins and minerals and you'd avoid deficiencies however we still also have the mental health side of what is a healthy diet and that's balance so if you want to go into the health aisle and you see something that looks yummy do it but just you know moderation is key what else which is a really boring response, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It, what, well, tell us what else you wouldn't eat. Okay, hot dogs. I didn't actually put that on the post oh my list. Oh, they're so good. Oh, really? Well, they're good the texture, when I watch though. sport. Yeah, okay, fair. <laughs> I go to a live game of sport in the US again when I went to basketball. I had to have a Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's traditional. Dog. You've got to. It's, it's an essential part. However, I think a lot of that is just the sauce, if I'm being really honest. I think mm. it's the tomato sauce and the mustard that just really sets it off. But... Um, the texture of it for me, it's never seen real meat. You know, if you ever eat a piece of steak or some pork or some chicken, you know the texture of a hot dog is not anywhere near real meat. Yeah, like, there's something ru- it's, rubbery. <laughs> it's rubbery. But it just melts in your mouth as well, which is just so odd because generally speaking, it should be fibrous, right? Like when you bite into meat, you have to chew it. You don't with hot dogs. So I would avoid that at all costs personally. And then probably things like baked... This is unfair. I don't want to you know, like put a, a brush across all baked goods, but generally speaking, like packaged baked goods are not going to be the best, and that's probably a big category that I would try and avoid most of the time. 
have the home baked stuff that your mum makes, sure thing. But the package stuff where you're getting Danishes from like a gas station or whatever, and it's probably been sat there for four weeks. That's probably the stuff I would be avoiding because of the additives, preservatives, and obviously all the shortening and trans fats what and things. What about those at more a bakery style place? Um, well, they've probably been baked from scratch, right? In which case I would be like, absolutely include them in your 20% of your your intake and if it's something you really love and you're not making it a big part of your diet definitely go for it yeah for sure now talk to us about this controversy around oat milk because is this a food do you have oat milk I have it occasionally yeah and I've got a particular brand that I go to that I know is um what I would consider a healthier version than some others because of the way that they've processed it and things. But I, and there's no added sugar, that's another thing that I look out for. Um, the controversy, which we just spoke about quickly, was whether, because there's two controversies, one seed oil, which we're going to probably save for another day, and the other one is whether it impacts your blood sugar levels. And um, We were just having the conversation that, um, of course, comparative to a nut milk, oat milk is made from a carbohydrate source, that being oats, which in the processing actually converts a starch into a more simple sugar. Simple sugars elevate blood sugar levels more quickly because they don't need to be broken down in your gut and therefore we get a little blood sugar spike. Now, every food elevates blood sugar levels. It's not dangerous unless it's chronically elevated to a really vast degree or you've got diabetes or you've got you know some predisposition where blood sugar needs to be kept stable so realistically if you're having a cup a day not a big deal but if you're looking at your overall sugar intake and it's con contributing say six grams which we said was like a teaspoon and a half it's worth considering swapping potentially to say a no uh, sorry, an unsweetened almond mm. milk or something that's got less sugar that comes from a nut based milk so that you can keep on top of your sugar levels. And remember as well, if you consume it with some fiber or with some fat or with some protein, the levels at which your blood sugar levels will rise or the speed will decrease. So if you're consuming it with, say you're having, I don't know, some eggs and toast and you have your oat milk latte or whatever, um, your blood sugar levels are not going to have the same amount of response. Mm, well answered. So I can keep drinking it. Thank you. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah. You've got a whole pass. <laughs> now, just quickly before we go, give us some foods that you eat regularly in your diet. <gasps> Ooh, berries. I've got an obsession with fro frozen blueberries at the moment. Ooh. You know how everyone does the frozen grape thing? Yes. Mine are all... Actually, my kids do that right now. Yeah, they're so great. Blueberries. But I do frozen blueberries and they just melt in your mouth and they're great for summer. Oh, I try that. Yeah. I am, like I eat a packet of blueberries a day. Absolutely. I've got one in the bag next to me right now ready to go for later. <laughs> You healthy girl. And I am going to try that. Yes, definitely stick them in the freezer. They're delish. You might want to give them a couple of minutes at room temperature so you don't break your teeth, depending on how hard you, fr <laughs> you freeze things. Um, so always berries. I love fatty fish. So I'm a barramundi girl at the moment just because we never had that luxury in the UK and I can't leave it alone. Um, but obviously things like salmon and trout are also amazing. A lot of people don't get enough omega-3s in the diet. So I love it. It's great for hair. It's great for skin, all the girly stuff. Um, it's also great for anxiety levels which people don't know so there's a lot of um people who under eat omega-3s and salmon's the key for that so lots of that lots of avocado and all the and chocolate i'm gonna say i was gonna say all the usual say healthy it. things but i want to say chocolate as well for balance because i love chocolate um mm. it's the best and it's easter and it's soon easter. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so balance girlies watch out <laughs> sally thank you for coming thank you for having me on thank healthy you